Thank you very much, Eminences, Excellencies, uh, dear Peter, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, really a great honor for me to participate in, in this event, which in, in recent years profiled itself as an important forum for interreligious uh, dialogue. I come from a country uh, where more than 90% of the population are Christians. Uh, it is also particularly not, uh, noteworthy that in Croatia there is also a very well-organized uh, Muslim community uh, numbering about 30,000 uh, faithful, mostly native to the land, and I will speak about them a little bit later. Uh, on learning about this gathering of such eminent participants, both uh, clerical and lay, I, I decided to take part because the protection of Christians and other religious minorities in the countries where uh, they are prosecuted is a priority that requires our full uh, cooperation. And in this sense, I'm extremely uh, glad to take part of this event that is organized by the Holy See and the Russian Federation, Armenia and Lebanon, and is co-sponsored by Brazil, Cyprus, uh, Greece, uh, Spain, and uh, Hungary, and yes, uh, Croatia and Serbia, all brought together uh, in solidarity with persecuted Christians. I think uh, that is in itself already a message. Um, it is uh, widely known that uh, uh, 2016, in 2016 more than 215 million Christians worldwide were exposed to some form of violence and persecution and about 200 churches were destroyed or damaged. Uh, this is the data presented at the European Parliament in Strasbourg by the Open Doors uh, non-governmental organization. The uh, persecution of Christians is rapidly increasing, especially uh, after the Arab Spring, so that the year 2016 will be remembered as the worst in the last 25 years since the association has been monitoring religious freedom and the persecution of Christians. The persecution of Christians and other minorities in the Middle East and in some African and Asian countries, destruction of churches and religious buildings have become an everyday occurrence. The statistics showing that a hundred years ago Christians in the Middle East constituted 20 percent and now barely 5 percent of the population are indicators of such a vicious trend. And it's become more severe in the recent years. Christians are exposed to various forms of persecution and equality in a vast number of members of the United Nations. All this prompted also Pope Francis to strongly condemn such violence, to admonish political uh, leaders and international organizations for condoning such practices all too easily. And since the victims are not only uh, Catholics, but also uh, uh, other Christians as well, Orthodox uh, in particular, the Pope often mentioned this ecumenism of, of blood that strengthens solidarity among, among Christians. Um, we also need here to say that by no means do we want to accept the thesis that this is a conflict of religions and civilizations or to negatively qualify Islam. Uh, I think that we need to be very precise here and stress that Islam is, of course, a religion compatible with democracy, while Islamism, radicalism, is the political ideology that wants to replace democracy with a caliphate. Now, the UN and the Human Rights Council have recognized this problem, and in the last few years, at the initiative of the Holy See, France, and the Russian Federation, and Lebanon, uh, held several meetings and panels in which prominent politicians and religious leaders of different religions took part. I think that it was two years ago uh, that a meeting was held on the subject also at the UN Security uh, Council uh, that spoke uh, about the apocalyptic projections of, of these crimes. And as an eyewitness to these events, the Chaldean Patriarch Sacco was invited as, as, the speak, as one of the speakers. And the Patriarch Sacco said at that time that the Arab Spring made Christian communities pay the price. However, uh, neither he nor anyone else at that uh, event accused Muslims at large. This needs to be said. But uh, Patrick Sarkos said that those are the deeds of indoctrinated fanatics. And I think it's important to be precise here as well. We are glad that the Human Rights Council uh, uh, recognized this problem and for several years now during its regular meetings, panels have been devoted to this issue. The former, for example, representative of the uh, Holy See to, to the UN here in Geneva, uh, uh, Monsignor Tomasi, in cooperation with the missions of the Russian Federation and Lebanon, spoke uh, very openly about the problem 
also in, in, in the previous years. A problem that somehow Europe uh, uh, probably underestimated, uh, as it was said uh, before. Um, I remember uh, that one of the uh, phrases used by Monsignor Tomasi was that the survival of Christian communities in the Middle East depends on our solidarity, also here in, in Europe. Uh, in addition to the beginning of the eradication of Christians in countries where Christianity originated, I think that we also need to be uh, concerned about some attitudes towards Christian communities in some of our Western uh, uh, democracies. Uh, in extremely secularized societies, religion is, uh, religion in general, not just one, religion in general, uh, is not longer viewed uh, as a positive social force generating solidarity, as for example Alexis de Tocqueville noticed in his democracy uh, in, in America. Uh, contrary to these views of uh, Tocqueville and others, which link the value of religion to the development of democratic uh, communities, nowadays it's frequent to hear arguments against religion and faith in general as backward behavior. Um, such a view, instead of facilitating the integration of religi religion commu religious communities in Europe, mostly Muslims, uh, actually widens the differences and narrows the channels of dialogues in, in our uh, Western societies. Uh, in the opinion of one of the best experts uh, of the e events in the Middle East, the Custos of, uh, of the Holy Land, uh, Franciscan's uh, father, Pizzabella, uh, which I think was recently ordained a bishop, uh, uh, he said, Europe also bears a share of responsibility because it views its views of Islam, uh, it views Islam from its own particular point of view and has never known how to integrate uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, people in, in our societies. And part of this is because the, na the, the channels of dialogue have been narrowed when it comes to an extreme secularism uh, in, the, in, the, in the approach. Now, uh, I would also like to briefly refer to the Muslim uh, community in my country, in, in Croatia. Uh, as I said, Croatia is uh, a predominantly a Christian uh, country. Uh, Muslims live in freedom and safety. The president of the Mishihat, uh, Mufti Aziz Fendia Hasanovic, visited the, the Holy See uh, three years ago. And in his talks with Pope uh, Francis, he said that the Islamic community in Croatia was extremely satisfied with its position and believes that its relations with the state can be an example to other EU member states. And not only that, the Mufti expressed orally and in writing an initiative for regulating the relations with Christian minorities in the countries with a Muslim majority. These relations, he said, should be regulated on the model of the relations between the Croatian state and the Muslims in Croatia. Among other things, he suggested uh, to the Vatican to send to the Conference of Islamic uh, States a letter of intent seeking state protection for Christian minorities and regulation of relations with them uh, following the Croatian model. Uh, Mufti Hasanovic conveys this idea also to all his high rank counterparts in Muslim uh, countries. Now, the key issue, of course, is how to uh, act uh, preventively and stop violence as soon as it starts in those countries where Christians are persecuted. I expect that today's discussion will bring uh, many useful ideas. We are guided by the idea of solidarity with those who suffer persecution and who are uh, hurt for whatever reason, especially because of their religion. In my opinion, uh, it would be ideal to reach a consensus among the permanent members of the Security Council of the UN to act in harmony, timely and efficiently in accordance actually with the UN Charter. I know that this ideal is very difficult to achieve, but it's essential for global uh, governance if we want to put it in that context. Those are the prerequisites to the harmonization of different interests, working together in preserving regional and global peace, which is the greatest capital that mankind has, and in developing cooperation, mutual understanding, and of course the progress of civilization. Thank you very much for your attention.